there is a disturbing trend of science denial sweeping much of the world. Some of it, like flat earth belief, is pretty innocuous. It really doesn't matter if you believe the earth is flat. You're really not hurting anyone, other than by contributing to a general disregard for science. But those that deny the safety of vaccines, that refuse to vaccinate their kids, and even worse, that spread misinformation about vaccine safety, are literally killing people. And many of the victims are innocent children and infants. And that is unconscionable. A dangerous outbreak of measles is underway in the U.S. and Europe. According to the World Health Organization, the CDC, the European Medicines Agency, and other medical organizations, measles is spreading again at an alarming rate, largely due to the invalid concerns of the anti-vax movement. WHO recently labeled vaccine hesitancy as one of the top 10 threats to global health. In the U.S., the measles was almost entirely eradicated by around the year 2000, by safe and effective vaccines. But in the first part of 2019, as of this recording, from January 1 to May 17, 880 individual cases of measles have been confirmed in 24 states. In Europe, the current trend is much worse. Since January 2018, there were over 100,000 cases recorded in the region and over 90 measles-related deaths. And make no mistake about the seriousness of measles. It's extremely contagious, and while most people recover from it, many require hospitalization. Some suffer serious long-term injury, and a small number die from it. From 1958 to 1962, before the vaccine was available, the U.S. averaged over 500,000 cases and 432 deaths associated with measles each year. Measles is a horrible health problem that science had solved with a very safe vaccine, but pseudoscience is undoing that progress. And why? Because of a few quacks and a great many misinformed people with little to no expertise and poor reasoning skills spreading false information. There is a false belief that the MMR vaccine, that is, the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine, causes autism. How do we know that is not true? Simple. We studied it with over a million kids in multiple countries, and the data clearly shows no correlation between the MMR vaccine and autism. In 2014, a meta-analysis of multiple studies that examined data from a total of 1.25 million children found that vaccinations are not associated with the development of autism or autism spectrum disorder. And in 2019, a study in Denmark looked at 600,000 kids and found no higher incidence of autism for those that got the vaccination compared to those that didn't. And furthermore, it looked at kids that had higher risk factors for autism, such as those having a sibling with autism, and still found no correlation. That's conclusive evidence, and there are many more studies. See a list of vaccine safety studies at healthychildren.org, linked in the description. If the MMR vaccine did cause autism, even some of the time, the data would surely show it. It doesn't. So, what's going on? Why do so many people think MMR causes autism? Well, it started with a fraudulent study, and it spread due to fear and some very bad reasoning. In 1998, the Lancet Medical Journal published a study by Andrew Wakefield, a now discredited former British doctor, which studied just 12 kids. Yes, you heard that right, 12 kids, nine of whom were reported to be autistic. 
And even though the study found no evidence that the children had contracted autism from the MMR vaccine, Wakefield declared publicly that it had found a link in a press conference and on 60 Minutes and on other media. And he called for the discontinuation of the MMR vaccine, creating a false alarm and kicking off a pseudoscientific scare movement that has perpetuated to this day. The Lancet later retracted the paper, saying that they had been deceived and called the paper utterly false. Physicians, medical journals, and editors have described Wakefield's actions as fraudulent. And Wakefield was struck off the medical register, meaning he could no longer practice as a physician in the UK. No credible study since has provided any evidence of a causal link between MMR vaccine and autism. And yet the myth continues to be spread as truth by the anti-vaxxers. A lie gets halfway around the world before truth puts on its boots. In the years following the study, some celebrities and many everyday people became convinced their children got autism from MMR vaccine. They claim that since their children first showed signs of autism in the days or weeks following the administration of the vaccine, that it must be the cause. Now let me say that I have great empathy for the parents of autistic children. It is devastating to know that your child may not be able to live a full, healthy life. And it is understandable for them to look for a cause to blame. But when they blame vaccines... Their reasoning is terribly flawed. To illustrate this, let's imagine I ate a banana for the first time ever. And later that same day, I came down with the flu. I might suspect that I got the flu from the banana, but the time correlation of a single pair of events is certainly not nearly enough to conclude with any level of certainty that one caused the other. Millions of people eat bananas, and millions get the flu. So even with no causal relationship, the odds that some people who just ate a banana will get the flu is 100%. That's right. It is a statistical certainty that these two groups will overlap because the numbers are so big. So, it is illogical to conclude that the banana caused my flu if I just happen to be in that group at the intersection of recent banana eaters and recent flu victims. Blaming the flu on the banana with no other information is a logical fallacy called post hoc ergo propter hoc, which means it came after, therefore it was caused by. Correlation alone does not equal causation. But what if I did suspect that bananas caused the flu? What would be the smart thing to do? Well, you would want to study the possibility by looking at many people, the more the better, and compare banana eaters to non-banana eaters. If the banana has any effect at all contributing to the flu, the data will surely show that a statistically significant number of more banana eaters got the flu than did non-banana eaters. If there is a causal relationship, there is simply no way for it to hide. If no correlation shows up, no matter how many people we look at, we can conclude bananas do not cause the flu. The same goes for vaccines and autism. And the studies have been done. Unfortunately, we don't know the cause of autism. But of all the possible environmental causes, Vaccines are the one thing that has been studied the most as a result of the fear brought on by Wakefield and others. And study after study involving over a million kids observed over many years have shown there is no link. MMR has been ruled out as a cause of autism. The case is closed. There is a logical explanation why some kids show signs of autism shortly after receiving the vaccine. 
Tens of millions of children in the world now get vaccinated. And the MMR vaccine is first administered around age one. And it just so happens, age one to two is also about the age that signs of autism tend to first show up, as the child's language and social skills are developing. And furthermore, some children with autism appear normal before age one or two and then suddenly regress and lose language or social skills they had previously gained. This is called the regressive type of autism. So, like the banana and the flu, there is an absolute statistical certainty that some small number of children will just happen to show signs of autism shortly after getting vaccinated, even though there is no causal relationship. So I hope you now see just how wrong those people are. They are making a huge, unjustified leap of logic. You will hear them say they are certain their kid's autism was caused by the vaccine, since they first saw signs of it in the days, weeks, or months after the vaccination. Like this. Without a doubt in my mind, I believe vac vaccinations triggered Evan's autism. My science is named Evan, and he's at home. That's my science. But I'm sorry, that is fallacious. You cannot draw a conclusion from a single case, or even many cherry-picked anecdotal cases, based solely on the timing. You need to look at all the data. All the best data, involving over a million kids, shows no correlation. Anecdotes are not good enough. Anecdotes can just be coincidences. When you have this many children involved, coincidences are certain to occur. It is bad reasoning to think that these coincidences equal good evidence for cause and effect, particularly when a correlation does not exist when we look at large numbers of children. Now, let me say that nothing in medicine is 100% without risk. Vaccines do sometimes cause side effects, but for the most part, these are very mild and short-lived, such as soreness and fever. In very rare cases, permanent damage can occur, such as deafness or brain damage. So the question we need to ask is, do the benefits of vaccines outweigh the risks? According to all the best available evidence, they do, by a landslide. Measles kills children. Vaccines save lives. Hundreds of millions of children have safely received the MMR vaccine worldwide, and the measles was almost entirely wiped out in the regions with the best vaccine usage. The World Health Organization estimates that all vaccines combined prevented at least 10 million deaths between 2010 and 2015, and many millions more lives were protected from illness. Compared to that success, the minute risks of serious vaccine side effects is well worth it. In fact, we accept much greater risks in our daily lives without even thinking about it. You put your child at risk of injury or death every time you drive them to school, or to the beach, or to the doctor's office. Vaccines are far safer than car travel. And the best data shows that the risk of autism from MMR in particular is zero. The bottom line is this. If you abstain from vaccinating your child due to unsubstantiated fear, you risk their lives. And also, you risk the lives of other children in your community. Vaccine effectiveness relies on enough people in the community being vaccinated to prevent the spread of disease to those that are not vaccinated, such as children under two and others who cannot get vaccinated due to other medical issues. This is called herd immunity. When the percentage of unvaccinated children gets too high, we start to see outbreaks like we are seeing today, which is likely to get worse. My heart goes out to you if you have a child with autism. No parent deserves to go through that. 
but your pain does not excuse you from risking the health of other children by failing to vaccinate your children or through the spread of misinformation. Misinformation spreads like a virus, but you can inoculate yourself to it and those you influence by learning about the real science of the safety of vaccines. You may have noticed I added footnotes to the video. These are all linked in the description to qualified scientific or journalistic sources to back up what I have said. Please read them if you have any doubts about the statements in this video. And if you are going to try to refute any of these statements, be prepared to back up your claims with real science. I welcome healthy discussion, but logical fallacies and conspiracy theories will not be sufficient to counter the well-studied science of vaccine safety. Before I finish, allow me to share the story of Sarah Clow, a young woman who was not vaccinated for medical reasons and who fell seriously ill with measles when she was five. Tango. Tango, yes. What color is Tango? No. Big, no. big horse, isn't he? Sarah wasn't vaccinated against measles because she'd had a touch of baby eczema. She was five and three quarters. We went to pick her up from school on the Friday afternoon. Met at the school gate with her teacher who said, I think Sarah's going to have the measles. And I just said very complacently, well, if she's not in school on Monday, you'll know why. And uh, then in front of our very eyes, she started slipping away. And she was in a coma before we knew where we were. Her whole body, uh, literally her whole body was smothered with measles so badly that it did attack her brain. She was in a coma for eight weeks, at, at, at death's door for eight weeks, literally. Hello there. Hello, Karen. Hello. Hello, Tango. Well, initially, Sarah was blind, completely blind. She couldn't hear at all. She didn't know anybody. She had no memory at all of having been ill. Um, and it was just as though we'd got a different child to what we had when she went into the hospital. She's now registered partially sighted and she's, and she's hearing impaired. She's also got what they call muscular hypotonia, which is where the muscles lose their tone completely. And that's what makes her very, very floppy. Walks like a little rag doll. Don't be blasé about it at all. You can't afford to be. Because a child who suffers brain damage They're brain damaged for life. And that is something that is very hard to bear. Sometimes, when we just hear about the numbers of measles victims, they are just numbers, and we don't really think about the devastating effects that can happen to real people like Sarah. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. This is my first video on the topic of anti-vaxxers, and I expect to do more. There are more bad claims to debunk, and more fallacies to expose, so stay tuned.